Hey, what's up, y'all? It's DJ Camouflage. This is the first of my recordings for this podcast that I'm going to be starting up here. I'm glad you guys are tuning in. I appreciate everybody who's been supporting me this whole way. I'm pretty sure most of you guys are going to be the ones that are listening to this uh, right off the bat um, because you've either been rolling with me for a long time or uh, we might even know each other personally or something like that. And I just want to say I appreciate it. Uh, It's just getting bigger and better, and I hope you guys just keep coming along for the ride. Uh, what I wanted to talk about on this one here was just the transition between um, how DJing used to be and how we're now where it's very um, Serato and technology oriented and technology dominant. Um, I got into the DJ game at a time, um, a really good time actually. I got to see uh, the transition between the two. And what I mean by that is, you know, some people who maybe DJed back in the day uh, and then stopped, um, you know, only did it on records um, or CDs or maybe. Um, and then you got some people that are just starting up now and they're kind of starting up with either controllers or like doing it completely through the computer. Um, I started up in 99. Um, I started with turntables and just spinning, you know, 12 inch vinyl records back and forth, back and forth. Um, and then slowly but surely, basically what happened was, you know, with the rise of like downloadable music and MP3s and stuff like that, um, people started to download music. So then a lot of CDs were being burned. Um, and people started to transition from, you know, turntables to maybe CDJs. Um, that wasn't an easy transition because obviously on CDJs, you can't do as much as the technique and stuff like that, um, that you would do on turntables. Um, but then there was still this thing of people just having a lot of music, um, downloaded onto their computer, uh, and a way of just getting it out there and being able to get that music out onto the speakers. Um, and so what people started to do was just kind of like hook up an auxiliary cord to their computer and hook it up to speakers. Well, once you did that, all you could really do was hit play, hit stop, hit play, hit stop. Um, you couldn't really DJ that way, and they didn't really have any platforms. Um, they started to come out with you know different programs on where you could um, you know kind of try to DJ through the computer, but none of them worked very well, and they were very. The thing was, is they were very, very, very different um, from DJing on turntables in in a bad way. Um, You know, when you were using turntables or even if you were using CDJ sometimes, let's just stick to turntables for the sake of this conversation. Um, But if you were using turntables, you had a lot of manipulation uh, over the record and over the song. You had a lot of manipulation on, you know, queuing up the record. Uh, where you wanted to start it, where you wanted to stop it. Obviously, you had the ability to scratch, uh, which has always been, you know, the main turntablism has been the main technique, um, the main thing of, you know, all the best DJs in the world that are out there. Um, And so when you start to transition to a digital interface, even if you transitioned over to CDJs, um, you know, you lost a lot of that. You lost that ability um, to kind of, be able to still scratch and, you know, be flawless with your technique and stuff like that. Um, I remember personally for me, I went through this kind of like intermediary phase and I know a lot of DJs during that time that did that, you know, kind of started up in the nineties like I did. Um, I started when I was 13 and this was in 1999. It was the like summer ending seventh grade going into eighth grade. Um, so we were just mixing on, like I said, on LPs and, you know, they were kind of expensive, five ninety nine dollars each or like $15 for a full album sometimes. Um, and so basically what happened was when CD burning started to be available and there was MP3s, um, I basically had this setup where I had my turntables and then I also had either one CD player or like a dual CD player set up um, right next to it or underneath it or under the stand or something like that um, so that I could, you know, still mix the records that I had. Um, but then kind of the newer songs that were coming out that I was downloading, I was burning onto CDs and I was playing them to the CD player. Um, again, it worked. And, you know, a lot of the newer songs were like not even being printed on vinyl anymore because vinyl was being kind of phased out. And so, you know, doing it on CD was, you know, kind of your only option um, for some of the songs that were coming out on the t- at the time. Um, so, you know, you would have this situation where on certain nights you'd be spitting with your vinyls. And then if you were doing newer songs or something that just come out, you'd switch over to the CD player that you had or the CD players that you had. So you could play a couple new songs off that. But see, we were still keeping it like turntable dominant. The majority of the night we were still on turntables. So it all became basically this struggle of how do we get the music that it's on our computer 
to be able to put on platters in front of us um, that we can manipulate the same way as records. So what they started to do is they kind of started to do controllers, and controllers just basically felt the same way as CDJs, um, and they didn't really, again, give you the ability to do what you could do with your turntablism. And then, boom, here comes Serato. Um, they, Serato originally was Scratch Live, and now it's called Serato DJ. What they were able to do was basically have your turntables be the controller. So what's happening there is your turntable needle is reading a tone off of a record, uh, a blank record. It's a Serato record, and they call it a control record. Um, I'm saying this because I know a lot of people listening to this are DJs, but some people aren't, so I'm going to kind of give a little you know, bit of background before I move on and people are confused or whatever. <laughs> um, but yeah, you know, so you would have what's how Serato works is you have a control vinyl and it sends a tone um, through the needle of your turntable and your turntable is basically plugged into a, a USB interface that USBs into your computer um, and it goes through the mixer and everything like that. And so now basically what they were allowing DJs to do was manipulate the MP3 that's on their computer on an actual vinyl record so that you didn't lose the feel of it. Um, I mean, I remember I was originally skeptical. Like when Serato first came out, I remember thinking, oh, that's cool, but it's not going to feel the same. Like you're, the, it's going to be glitchy. Like it's not going to be exactly like um, how it is when you just have a song on regular vinyl. Um, come to find out, you know, it's fucking amazing. <laughs> um, the shit, when you put an MP3 on, you know, a, a Serato platter on the left side on the computer, it puts it on the left platter that's in front of you. And when you touch it, it moves exactly with your hand. Um, I really feel that this is why Serato is like the dominant force in this. Um, because really, a lot of the other programs, in my opinion, that I've used um, aren't as like right on point as Serato is. Like where they don't glitch at all and they move like perfectly with the uh, turntable. There's other uh, programs out there that are like pretty close. But maybe their music quality is not as good, like the audio quality um, is not as good in the interface. Um, and I say this because really, if you're working the club circuit like I am, every club that you go to is pretty much going to have Serato. Um, some of them now, if you're using CDJs, um, are just going to have the ability for you to just plug in with your USB stick and play right off your USB stick. But... You know, if you're going there, especially like I am to use turntables, they're going to have Serato there. So if you're not already using Serato, you know, it's going to be inconveniencing to them. So you'll see, you know, the DJs that are working the club circuit on a regular basis, you know, they're always using Serato just to make things easier for everybody. And it's also the shit. So why not? Right. Well, this was awesome because basically also what this allowed us to do was now before where we kind of always had to like have a headphone on our ear and be listening to the records to beat match them, um, we could kind of see it on the screen as well. We could see wavelengths and we could see where drops of songs were going to start happen or where the song was going to start or end. So it wasn't as much as a guessing game anymore. Um, on top of that, um, I mean, it obviously gives you the ability to just sync two songs, just hit sync and sync and beat match. But if you do that, fuck you, you're a piece of shit DJ. So I'm not even going to touch on that shit. Um, but anyways, you know, it did make it a little bit more visual for us. Um, people who were already mixing from back in the day um, were already really good at, you know, mixing just by ear, by beat matching by ear. Um, but now it kind of allowed you to see it on the screen, too, and was really important was, like I said, you could see where the song started, see where the song ended. You know, it wasn't necessarily too much of a guessing game of where you had to drop the needle anymore. On top of that, you know, it allowed you to queue up things. Um, obviously, before, you know, on a record, you can't, like, queue up something to exactly the point that you want it. Um, because it's, you know, it's, it's a record. I mean, if anybody's ever looked at a record before, a lot of times the first thing a lot of people ask me when they look at my records is, oh, how do you know where the song starts? And it's like, oh, well, it's kind of at this outer line over here. And it's like, oh, that's hard. Well, you know, it kind of eliminated that. But the main thing, and the main thing that I think that Serato changed the game for a lot of DJs that were kind of working the circuit and being like mobile DJs and stuff like that, um, was the fact that you didn't have to take all your records with you everywhere anymore. Um, basically all the mp3s that you had on your computer were the songs that you were going to play for the night and all that you had to take was those two control records so i remember personally for me like 
20, 25 minutes of my unload time sometimes was just crates of records. So like if I got somewhere and I needed like an hour to set up, like sometimes 20 minutes of it, you know, was just unloading records. And this is a situation where I'm like bringing speakers and stuff. If it was a situation where I was DJing at a club, I remember they would have like a turntable set up and then they would have like a big table next to you so you could have all your records right there next to you, you know, which was awesome. But now it's like, oh, I don't have to take these everywhere. Um, and then you didn't have to lose them either because if there was some songs that like you only had on record, you could just record them into the Serato program and then you could still take them with you. So I really feel like that was the biggest game changing thing um, for DJs was that, you know, that transition into the digital world that we're in now. Um, obviously, a lot of people talk about the discrepancies of like how it's too easy to DJ now and everybody is a DJ because they've made it so easy through technology and you just buy a program and a controller and everybody can DJ now and this and that. And, you know, that may be true to some respect. Um, you know, the main thing that that has brought up is, you know, a lot of these people who kind of like just have a lot of friends and they're kind of just like promoters basically, but they you know, they start DJing because they know that they can get a big draw at the clubs that they play at. Um, and so they'll just kind of like, oh, throw their name out there as a DJ, buy a quick program, click a few buttons on the screen, call themselves a DJ. Um, and yeah, and that's caused a lot of problems. Why? Because there's a lot of shitty people out there that do that. And then they kind of, you know, give a bad image to DJs in general. But I'll tell you one thing and I'll tell you why no, none of you guys should worry about this shit is because those people don't last because they're not in it for the love, they're not in it for the talent, and they don't actually sit there and learn how to DJ. So yeah, they might play a show here or a festival there, or they may get lucky and you know get into some magazine and be labeled as a good DJ and this and that. You might be like, what the fuck? But you know those people, they only play that stuff for so long and then they die out. It's the people who are in it to do it because they love DJing and they're all about it. And you know those are the ones that are going to last and those are the ones that are going to be here to stay. And a lot of them are the ones that have been here since the beginning. You know, There's a lot of guys out there like me who have started on turntables and just have transitioned over time. And you know, there's a lot of old people out there now that are like, they made DJing too easy because they made it all digital. Well, it's like, you know what? You keep up with that too, because if you were good at it before and now it's easier, then imagine how good you're going to be now that you have the technology to help you out, right? So it's like, it's not like that technology is only available to some people and not available to you. So instead of complaining about it, become the master of it. You know what I mean? You were good on your turntables before, then you were good on CDJs, then you fucked around on your computer for a little bit, then you got yourself a controller, and every now and then you would go back to turntables, every now and then you go back to CDJs. You know, sometimes people DJ with CDs still. You know, sometimes people DJ with the flash drive and this and that. But look, man, whatever it's going to be, be the master of it, learn it, um, be all about it. You know what I mean? Don't use it to its minimal effort where you're just fucking standing up there, you push and play, you push and pause, you push and play, push and pause. You know, learn it at its core. Um, become really good at, you know, whatever interface you're going to be on. Like I said, I recommend Serato, and that's kind of what this whole podcast right here was about. Um, but, you know, like I said, utilize it and just be good at it so you don't have to worry about anybody running past you. You know, I know a lot of guys out there that kind of like, when this took that turn and everybody just kind of started DJing and they kind of, you know, didn't agree with what was going on, they just kind of stopped. But instead, you know, what the guys that are still, you know, making it and the guys that are the shit and, you know, the best dudes out there, um, they're the ones that just utilized it when it came around and they just changed with it. And really, that's what life is. Life is always changing, right? So even if you're going to be doing a craft, you have to expect that it's going to change and change with it and continue with it. Because if you love it, you're going to do it till you die. So you might as well learn how it's going to be so that you can continue doing it. <laughs> um, you know, a lot of things unmentioned, um, like effects and, um, you know, being able to just like move rapidly through songs and sessions that Serato also made possible for the game. But really, I just wanted to touch on that main thing um, about how Serato basically made it um, available for us to take our MP3s and play them on a format that it was like a, we were playing on a vinyl record. Um, and basically made it so we didn't have to take all of our records everywhere with us or a big crate of CDs somewhere with us. 
um, and we could basically take you know a hard drive our computers basically and go off of that um, and so I that's like one of the greatest things that I've seen um, over the past you know almost 18 years in the game um, and I just want to say hey I'm gonna continue to do this right here I'm gonna have different topics um, not everything's gonna be about DJing um, a lot of things are just gonna be things that I've seen and things that are from my opinion um, but I appreciate you guys' support and everything that I'm doing. Uh, coming up here on 420, my new single, Squad, is coming out. Hashtag Squad. Um, it's coming out on Spotify, Rap City, RDO, iTunes, you know, pretty much everything that you um, listen or you buy music from or stream music from, it's coming out on. Um, so go ahead and go stream that, buy that. I would love that. I appreciate y'all that always support me and my music and stuff. I have a lot of shows coming up soon. I'm going to be doing Newport Beach Film Festival pretty soon here on April 27th. Um, and I can, you know, um, keep you guys updated basically on my website, um, on any of the shows I have coming up. And I'm just going to post these pretty regularly. Uh, I'm going to have them right here on djcamouflage.com, www.djcamouflage.com. Um, D-J-K-A-M-O-F-L-A-G-E dot com and I'm also going to put them on YouTube just in case anybody wants to get them from there um, and also I was just going to say you know keep up with everything that's going on everything's moving pretty fast right now and uh, I really want all you guys to be there with it um, and also you can follow me at DJ Camouflage on everything Instagram, Twitter um snap everything is at dj camouflage dj k-a-m-o-f-l-a-g-e all right a lot of music and a lot of more new things coming and uh, i love you guys very much i appreciate y'all listening i hope it was informative for y'all and there's even better ones coming so check out the next one peace <laughs>